Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be reviewing these cars, but not taking them out of the box. Because if you ask me, um, these I'm, I'm just going to keep them inside the box. Because um, I could take them out of the box if I wanted to. But knowing the past that I've had these cars, yeah, they've been bashed up when I was younger. Because I like to recreate crashes and yeah, so... I wish I could go back in time and fix that problem, but unfortunately we can't. Unfortunately, Stewie Griffin doesn't exist. He's not a real character. If he was, I would definitely gladly use that time machine. Anyways, these two cars in question are Clint Boyer's number 15 Patriotic 500 Energy and Tony Stewart's Mobile One car. So we're going to start off with Clint Boyer. Now... These are nostalgic to me. Like, look at these boxes. They're, like, so weird compared to um, these boxes by Lionel. Like, a lot of these boxes look simple. They look... And look at this. Like, compared to... Comparing to this, to that, dude, like, there's, like, no waves on each. So, I'd definitely say Lionel has better boxes. But, my goodness, man. These boxes are still looking cool. So... If you guys didn't know, like, man, it feels so weird seeing, uh, having a 500 energy car without the damn base underneath. Plus, basically 500 energy was ruined because of these, uh, having die cast because of these, of these parents. Because of, because these are harmful to, to people. Like, it's not the bet, it's not a healthy drink. It's, I know it's like an energy drink, but it can kill you at the same time. So, um. I'm just happy to have this car. Now, if you, now. I really miss um, Michael Walter Bracing. They're a good team. This is from 2012, this car. The last year of Gen 5, I think it was. Yeah, it was Gen 5. A year before Gen 6 start. And I miss Gen 6 too. More than the Gen 5. But these these molds, these cars are on. Like, here's this side of the car. They're, like, so different. Like, you see how... Like, they're so much different from... Compared to um to Lionel diecasts, so if the question is, imagine if Spin Master kept making um NASCAR Fentics NASCAR diecasts. They stopped after 2015, I'm pretty sure, which which is unfortunate. That's seven years ago, but it is what it is. You can't change the past. I don't know why they stopped. I really don't know why. Because then this way the Lionel could get away with all this stuff and not fail and mark it. Because there's basically no other competition to challenge them. And I miss when they would do this. Like a, imagine for the Lionel cars. Like Spin Master did something with these cars. Like they did two packs of like famous finishes. But like remember the Kyle Busch and Joey Logano or Denny Hamlin and Joey Logano finish. Yeah at Auto Club they did a couple with that. But for seriously for NASCAR Fendix they should do this. Have the driver on it with their name and have like the box design, the out design, outline design for the box. So very cool to have this car. I do not recommend having 500 energy. Their paint schemes are cool. Don't get me wrong, but they're not good for you. They could kill you, but you could say that for Red Bull and Monster Energy. But hey, I don't know. I really don't know. Uh Apparently these Karens, like they left the sport after Furniture Row Racing shut down um, because they had a good relationship with Truex. Well, they first came from like Clint Boyer and then they, or, or Stephen Wallace, and then they came over to um, uh, Clint, uh, then they came over to Eric Jones and then Truex and yeah. Very cool car. The number, f I love this font for the number 15 font. Like if you look at the Rick Ware Racing font, the number 15, it's all right, but I love this font right here. It looks so cool. My guess is this car was ran at um, the Charlotte race, the fall race. I think he won in this car. I'm not quite sure. It was either the first or second Charlotte race. I don't know. But very cool car. The same year that that Spin Master stopped making NASCAR Fentex was the year Michael Walter Racing shut down. And imagine if we still had all these Toyota teams like Levine Family Racing, Federal Racing, and Michael Walter Racing. They weren't axed by Joe Gibbs. Then Joe Gibbs would actually have some competition for from Toyota teams. That's why I think JTD Doherty just and MBM Motorsports dodged a bullet. 
instead of going with with um Joe Gibbs, which is basically a death trap, um they start off their own. They go to a different manufacturer, like JTD Doherty went from Toyota to Chevrolet, and and MBM went from Toyota to Ford. Um, I think they 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 still do run Toyotas and Xfinity. Not sure about Cup, like the the couple races of Cup they've been in this year. They've just ran Fords, uh, two Fords in the Daytona 500 race with JJ Ailey and Timmy Hill, and um, the the Coda race with Boris said. So very cool diecast. Glad to have this one. So let's, sorry for that long period of time. So here's the next one. This is Tony Stewart's. I'm not sure if it's either his 2012 or 2011 car, but look at this. He got his signature on the car. That is so cool. Is that Boyer's signature as well? Probably is. That's what they should do with these cars. They should get the driver's signatures to put on the car and the car in the background. That's what they should do with the Lionel boxes. But this car, um, very cool. Very cool paint scheme, just like the, just like the 500G car. Love how there's the silver rims on the car, makes it look cool. Um, you got Mobile One Men. Look how far this this sponsor has came. It, it went from like a sponsor like this, with like a white hood, to to know how Kevin Harvick's Mobile One sponsors are. Like they've gone, like they came a long way. This is back in like 2011, 2012. Very cool stuff. This is another. This is a Chevrolet car, man. I miss Stuart, Tony Stuart Haas racing um Chevrolets. Like, imagine if they never went to Ford. Imagine if they stayed with Chevrolet. Probably then the results in 2018 would have been better for Chevrolet. Cause, yeah, that's what I would think. That that season was just horrendous for Cup. Xfinity and trucks were excellent. Were good seasons for Chevy. Cup was just terrible. But he got um. Got Stewart on the box, just like where you have Clint Boyer on there. And it's a normal NASCAR Fentex box. Got the NASCAR sticker. Stewart Haas Racing, this team still exists. Just imagine a world where an alternative universe where Tony Stewart never collided, collabed with him, with Gene Haas. Just imagine where that direction would have gone. My guess is that uh, Haas Racing would have shut down the next few years, probably, if, if, if Tony Stewart didn't help build the organization probably the team would have been closed like that the team would have shut down like after a few year few more years of just mediocrity and just bad luck and not really good drivers like they've had mike bliss he's an okay driver they had johnny Sauter, who wasn't really meant for cup let's just be honest he was always a, a truck guy a truck series driver so you had those drivers who drove for the team, and you had these random, uh, like you had uh, Jason Leffler, RIP to him. So yeah, you got those drivers, but now you got veterans like Kevin Harvick, um, Eric Alaroma. You got uh, Cole Custer and Chase Briscoe. So yeah, this team came a long way, and this team hasn't been around for a long time either. This, if you look at like. At Henrik Motorsports, Joe Gibbs, they've been in the sport for 30, 40 years. This team has only been around for 13 years, so with the club. I think Gene Haas, before Stuart, Tony Stewart collided, we collabed with the team. Um, they The team was like around since 2004, I'm pretty sure, 2003, 2002, I'm not sure. But yeah, very cool car. I love the boxes to these cars, but I would prefer the Lionel boxes because... The Blitz, just be honest, the mold is much better than the Spin Masters mold. So, yeah. Very cool cars. Love the 14 font, just like the 15 font. Man, this should, they should bring this font back. Rick Ware Racing, please take some notes. But they probably will never bring back the font. So, yeah. So, that's getting off this video. I hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a like, thumbs up. Turn on the notification bell as well as subscribe. Comment down below what you think about these two diecasts. And I'll see you on the next video, y'all. Peace out.